Hey there. My name is Morgan Hicks. I'm the Director of Education and Program Development at Theater Squared. And we're so excited to welcome you back for another episode or a webisode of Play On, uh, our online content delivery program that we've started at Theater Squared to share um, some virtual outreach and um, content with our teachers and students across the state while we're social distancing. Um, so today, uh, I wanted to um, create something for you guys uh, that, that a lot of teachers have been talking to me about. Um, how do we, as teachers, as coaches, as directors, um, use this time well um, when we're working with our actors and we're not able to be in the same space with them, we're not able to stage things necessarily, um, stage scenes, um, how can we use this time to help our actors continue to grow their skills um, and continue to be on the track uh, to jump back in with um, with doing some amazing scene work with their partners uh, when all of this time of social distancing is over. Um, so today what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to share with you a scene um, from a play called The Shining Lives and um, this scene is a short scene, um, it's a two-actor scene and it's an early scene in the play. Um, it's early, uh, um, it's the first time that we see these two characters on stage. And the characters are um, Tom and Catherine. And Tom and Catherine have a relationship that's going to become very clear um, to the students, to the actors, um, as they read the scene. And um, what I want to do is I just want to think through how can we, through Zoom or another one of these um, kind of online programs, how can we work with the actors to make sure that they're landing beats, that they're hitting their emotions, that they're understanding their characters given circumstances, um, that they're making choices, basically. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to welcome my actors in. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit of um, the prep work that I've done on this the text itself. And then we'll kind of walk through um, just a, a first stab at, uh, at a little coaching session. All right, let me see if I can make this happen. Okay, um, so here we have the scene. Um, this is These Shiny Lies by Melanie Marnich. And um, this is act one, scene two. Uh, and so we can kind of see here um, basically what's going on um, in the scene. We see that um, Catherine is at home getting ready for her first day of work. Um, what we have established as far as given circumstances is this is happening in the 1920s. Um, and uh, if we had read the play, um, we would know that um, Catherine and Tom are married. Um, they're kind of a, um, a young married couple. And um, the play, because it's set in a historic period, um, is great for all kinds of dramaturgy work. Um, we can encourage our students to do a lot of research about the time period, um, how uh, regular, how normal it would be for a woman to be going to work, what kinds of jobs women could do, um, how much they could expect to get paid, um, what the sort of societal standards as far as um, men having women that are staying at home um, being housewives versus um, working outside the home, uh, what that would look like. Um, so already, like, we know that there's, like, a lot of kind of great, delicious stuff that we can dig into, um, a lot of meat on the bone as far as um, discovering uh, information about these characters. Um, but um, for today, we're going to be kind of exploring this relationship mostly. Um, so the scene is fairly short. It goes back and forth with Tom and Catherine. Um, there aren't any big chunks of text. Um, and so we know that as far as rhythm goes, um, it's going to kind of go back and forth pretty quickly um, at a pretty quick clip um, because we're not getting, you know, into a situation where we're having to dig into a lot of um, a lot of big long speeches or lots of text. Okay, so now I'm going to, now that we've had a chance to look at the script a little bit, um, as directors we would have um, spent all of that time in dramaturgy, a lot of time thinking about the characters and the events of the play, what needs to be communicated to our audience in each of these moments. Um, but when I uh, go into a scene study a situation with actors, I want to try to understand that um, I don't need to make all these decisions for them, right? I want to give a little bit of space for them to discover the characters on their own, um, figure out what it is that their characters really need in these moments, and um, really come to an understanding of their relationship um, on their own. Um, so I don't want to necessarily spoon feed all of these things for them. Um, 
So uh, I want to try to reserve that a little bit, that urge a little bit to solve all these problems because that's the joy and the fun of collaborating with, um, with actors. Um, so we're going to invite our actors in to our Zoom. Um, this is going to be Emily Tomlinson um, and Joe Binzer. They're um, two of my favorite actors, two of my favorite people. Um, and you'll recognize them. They're going to be familiar faces because they've been out on um, the Arkansas Schools Tour uh, for the last three years, visiting 70 or 80 schools every um, every fall. And uh, so uh, you will recognize them from that. Or if you, if you don't recognize them from that and you are not familiar yet with the schools tour, please reach out to us because we would love to get your school um, on our list of schools to visit. Uh, this is a, a free program that we offer through Theater Squared um, with funding from the Arkansas Arts Council and the Wingate Foundation and some other generous donations um, that makes it possible for us to visit a school, um, spend time at the school doing a, um, a 45 minute performance um, that's tied into curriculum. And then we also offer workshops to theater and English classes or um, any classes that would enjoy having some actors visit them, uh, professional actors visit them in their classrooms. Um, so uh, we'll welcome Joe and Emily when they pop into Zoom and uh, we'll take a little stab at the scene um, to see what we can discover. Oh, there's Emily and there's Joe. Hey Joe. Hello. Awesome. Full disclosure, Emily and Joe are married and they are in the same home, but we are going to model for you what it would be like if they are um, sequestered in different areas. Um, so uh, we will pretend that they are not quarantined together and can't hear each other through walls. <laughs> How are you Perfect. guys doing? Doing good. How are you? Good. And you guys got the script that I sent? Yes. Awesome. And um, you, you, neither of you have read the play before, right? So this is sort of Correct. your first experience with the play. All right. What I would love to jump in and start to start doing is um, I would like to just read the script in a very neutral way. Um, you don't need to have any kind of pressure to put on in any kind of choices. Um, we don't, you don't know anything about this, these characters yet, right? So um, let's just read through the script and see what, um, what information we get from just the text. Awesome. Well, aren't you the prettiest thing? What time is that? Early. I think I'm gonna be late. You're fine. The time. Guess. Tom. Guess wrong. I kiss you. Guess right. You kiss me. It's morning. It sure is. Guess. Seven fifteen. Mm, you smell good. 7.30? You smell better. Quarter till, quarter till eight. Am I getting closer? You were it the first time. Be honest. Tell me, how do I look? You could stop a clock, which could be a problem at this new place. Do I look like a girl worth eight cents a watch? Because that's what these girls get paid. Some of them make over $8 a day. A day? A day. Katie, mm. I know it don't make a ton of money, but we're getting by. Barely. We're barely getting by. That comment could make an insecure guy insecure. We can do better than barely. I could pick up some extra hours. You don't have to do this. Yes, I do. We could use the money. Anyone could use the money. It's fine. We need the money. And since my mom will stay with the babies during the day. She'll spoil them. They should be spoiled, they're babies. It's your first full-time job, you know. I know, believe me. It's different working full-time. Making money, making good money is, it doesn't come cheap. Work can cost you a little, you know. Uh, you sitting at a table all day, it's not all good times. They call it work for a reason. Not this job. Everyone I talk to says it's a piece of cake. All the girls on the block applied for it, I just got lucky. Besides, I'll do it for a while till we get on our feet, then I'll quit. Promise? Yeah, I don't want to be some, some career girl, but for now. You're sure you want to work? I'm sure I want to make eight cents a watch. Well then, I say knock him dead, gorgeous. Okay, great. Um, I switched over to uh, the speaker view um, just to like kind of see you guys talking and as I was doing it, it was giving me a little bit of, um, uh, of some sort of lag because it's 
cutoff off of when you speak. Um, and then there's still like a little delay before it pulls you into focus. Um, so it's not ideal, right? Um, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go with this kind of gallery view so I can see both of you guys at the same time. Um, so the first thing that we want to do in any kind of scene study is we just want to kind of explore the text a little bit as detectives and try to figure out what it is, what information um, the text is giving us, right? Um, so what are some things that you guys are immediately suspicious about or suspecting um, about these characters or what's going on in the scene? Oh. Um, they, uh, they are like a couple that's very much in love. Um, they're like sweet and funny. <laughs> and, um, so we know like a little bit about their personalities from that. Um, we know that they are struggling for money. So like the stakes are high in this, even though there's a lot of joking and everything, but this is still a very serious thing that she needs this job and they need her to have this job. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, and I feel, um, reading for Tom, I felt like Tom was um, putting on a front and kind of trying to act like it didn't bother him that she needed to work and that he couldn't provide. Um, and just kind of trying to grapple with the fact that he might not be enough um, and not in any sort of romantic way, but just uh, financially, he might not be able to provide. Amazing. Right. So like right out of the gate, they have made a lot of choices. Um, directors make um, choices about plays and trying to try to figure out what's happening. But actors are so, so good at directing themselves into making big, bold choices um, about what's going on inside of each of their characters. Right. And so um, with like two or three pages, um, they've already figured out what's going on, what they need, um, why they need it so badly, um, what the stakes are. And even um, even Joe was able to say, okay, they're saying this, but they're actually like, there's something else going on underneath, like the fuel um, that's happening underneath the scene um, is something that he's not quite saying, like he's kind of holding on to a little bit of a secret, right? Um, and so that's amazing work that they're doing. And I think as um, coaches, you just wanna make sure that you validate all of those like amazing things that they're popping off um because that's not easy you know it's not easy to make a choice and to have the courage to um, put ideas out there into the world um and so uh that's going to make it really fun to play around with because they've already got all of these choices that they're going to be able to experiment with um so how long have they been married do you have any idea mm. it feels like and I haven't read the whole script, but it feels like they're like a young couple who's still figuring things out and that they, maybe not for very long. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I yeah. agree with that. Yeah. They've got a baby, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, so probably fairly new marriage, but not like brand, brand new. Um, what I mentioned to uh, to the, the viewers earlier before you guys popped on in was um, that in the full script, um, we find out that this is set in sort of the 1920s. It goes into the 1930s. Um, and so there are going to be some things that we're going to be able to explore dramaturgically about, um, you know, what kinds of uh, fields were, would be open for women, um, how much people would be making at that time. Um, Joe, you were able to see that, um, that you know, obviously Tom's working, um, he's got a job, but it's not quite enough to um, give them that kind of lifestyle that maybe they would like or make them feel like super um, taken care of. And at this time, um, we know that wages were pretty low. Um, we were, you know, um, in general, uh, women weren't working outside of the home a whole lot. Right. Um, so in this script, in this part of the script, we don't learn um, much about the job itself, but there are clues in there. Did you pick up on any clues about what kind of work this might be? Something to do with watches. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah he, says, he has a line sure. in there about time, right? Mm -hmm. He says it'll, it stops the clocks and that might be bad with this job. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's there, she's going to go to work at a watch factory, um, and and she's going to be um, painting the hands on um, the dials on the watches um, with this new radium paint um, that is amazing because it it allows the the um, watch hands to glow in the dark. Um, what they mm -hmm. don't know at that time is that it contains 
a lot of radium poisoning. Um, mm. And so it's going to be very, very dangerous, this field that she's going into. But we don't know that yet. And so in this scene, um, we don't want to portray anything. Um, we don't want to, like, tell the end um, story at this moment in the play. Um, so what I want to do is I kind of want to screen share um, now a little uh, work that the director would have done um, looking at uh, the beats. And in, um, if I can find it, uh-oh, uh-oh, I don't know. I don't know how to do this very well. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> can you guys see the beats right now? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Um, so in the script, what I've gone ahead and done is I've sort of made a little mark um, where I think beats are shifting. And um, actors are going to find um, these moments themselves. A beat shift is going to be any time when... Um, when the energy is going to shift in the scene or when somebody's going to bring up something new, um, change the subject, or sometimes it's an intrusion. Sometimes like somebody new will enter the scene and so that'll be a French scene um, beat shift or maybe the phone's going to ring and that's going to change our energy in the scene. Um, but in, a, in even a scene that's fairly lighthearted where they don't really get into anything super heavy, um, when there's not like a huge conflict um, between the characters, um, there's still these little shifts of beat. And those are the moments um, as a director that you want to make sure that you're carving out with your actors, that you're asking them questions about, like, why, um, why are you shifting energy here? Um, what, do, what do you need? How is it, um, uh, how are those needs manifesting? How are they changing? Are you shifting tactics? Are you, um, are you changing the scene in some way, um, in some palpable way? Um, and so as we read through this time, if you guys can see it, we'll just read it. Um, can you get, make a big choice about that um, beat shift for me? And it doesn't have to be the one that will land on it. doesn't necessarily have to be correct. I just want to see what the scene kind of feels like if you're making a big choice in these moments. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, <clears throat> well, aren't you the prettiest thing? What time is it? Early. I think I'm going to be late. You're fine. The time? Guess. Tom. Guess wrong, I kiss you. Guess right, you kiss me. It's morning. It sure is. Guess. Seven. Fifteen. Mm. You smell good. 7.30? You smell better. Quarter till eight. Am I getting close? You were right the first time. Be honest. Tell me, how do I look? You could stop a clock, which could be a problem at this new place. Do I look like a girl worth eight cents a watch? Because that's what these girls get paid. Some of them make over eight dollars a day. A day? A day. Katie. Mm -hmm. I know I don't make a ton of money, but we're getting by. Barely. We're barely getting by. That comment could make an insecure guy insecure. We can do better than barely. I could pick up some extra hours. You don't have to do this. Yes, I do. We could use the money. Uh-oh. Thanks, <laughs> Mom. Anyone could use money. I need the money. And since my mom will stay with the babies during the day. She'll spoil them. They should be spoiled. They're babies. It's your first full-time job, you know. I know. Believe it's me. Different. It's different working full-time. Making good money is, it, it doesn't come cheap. Work can cost you a little, you know. You sitting at a table all day, it's not all good times. They call it work for a reason. Not this job. Everyone I talk to says it's a piece of cake. All the girls on the block applied for it. I just, uh, the rest of it's cut off. Oh. I'm so sorry. Just like, I can look at it on here. I just got lucky. Besides, I'll just do it for a while till we get on our feet. Then I'll quit. Promise? Yeah. I don't want to be some, some career girl. But for now. Sure you want to work? I'm sure I want to make eight cents a watch. Well then, I say knock them dead, gorgeous. Okay, good. Um, so this time through, um, 
I definitely saw those shifts happening a little bit more and um, and we were just kind of doing it on the fly so we weren't necessarily making a decision about those those shifts. We were just seeing what it would feel like to kind of experiment with um, those those moments feeling a little different and there being like sort of a change of focus. So let's go back through and let's make a choice about those shifts and, and see if there's um, anything that we want to experiment or explore um, as far as what we want from our partner changing um, or what we want the partner to feel changing. So going back to the top. Well, aren't you the prettiest thing? What time is it? <laughs> okay, so that beat shift there. Emily, what were you trying to accomplish in that change? Shut him down. We gotta focus up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, look again, like I'm, I'm, on a, I'm on the clock. I've got stuff to, to get done, and I don't want to talk about how pretty I am right now. I want to talk about um, what I need to get done. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, we'll start at the top again. Well, aren't you the prettiest thing? What time is it? Early. I think I'm going to be late. You're fine. The time? Yes. Tom. Guess wrong, I kiss you. Guess right, you kiss me. Okay, so in that shift when you went to guess, uh, Joe, what was what were you thinking you were changing there? I'm trying to make her play or kind of get her mind off of the fact that she might be a little nervous. Yeah, so you're kind of you're teasing her, you're playing with her, trying to mm -hmm. be more playful and getting her mind off of the nerves that she that you suspect that she's feeling about this first day of work, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then how, how do you respond to that, Catherine? Um, I'm still like, I see what you're doing, but I do need to continue to get ready. <laughs> it's a big deal. Yeah, so you don't follow him in that change, that beat shift completely, okay. right? Yeah, you're a little bit reluctant, um, and he kind of pulls you in here during this beat, but it's not an immediate shift that you are like, yes, I, I follow your lead as far as the tone of this moment, yeah. Alright, so from um, Tom's guess. Guess. Tom. Guess wrong, I kiss you. Guess right, you kiss me. It's morning. It sure is. Guess. 7, 15. Mm, you smell good. 7, 30? You smell better. Quarter till 8? Am I getting close? You were right the first time. <laughs> Be honest. Tell me, how do I look? Okay, you? so what, what is that shift, Emily? So that shift is, we played, <laughs> I did it, okay? <laughs> I was fun, but now, gotta get back on track, um, and I need him to actually tell me honestly. Like, yeah. is this good? I do, this is my first full-time job. <laughs> Be on, like, I say be honest, but truly, like, shoot me straight. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. You're, you're, you've played with him, you've, you've um, sort of had that moment of, of um, sweetness, but now you really do have, like, it is actually time to go, and you actually do have high stakes on this, you do want to look good, you have a, a big investment in this emotionally, and, um, and you really want him to tell you that you've got this, right? Right. Go from be honest, tell me. Be honest, tell me. How do I look? You could stop a clock, which could be a problem at this new place. Do I look like a girl worth eight cents a watch? Because that's what these girls get paid. Some of them make over eight dollars a day. A day? A day. Katie. Hmm? I know I don't make a ton of money, but we're getting by. Barely. We're barely getting by. Okay, so what was that change from the um, from the $8 a day moment to Katie? Um, I felt like that was Tom. Uh, that was the first time Tom heard about how much money she would be making. Um, and it's really just digging in and um, he's feeling really insecure about it and he wants to make sure that she's not getting in over her head just because he can't provide and he's feeling a little guilty and wants to um, maybe get it off his chest 
Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, that's like a, a pretty serious shift then from, um, from being playful and kind of trying to gas her up a little bit and make her feel good about going to work and how good she's looking mm -hmm. to really kind of living with that insecurity and um, how serious this sort of is, this, that if she's getting paid that much, then, um, then she's going to have to do a lot and it feels important. Um, and then, yeah, that also that insecurity of like, what if, what if I'm not enough? What if like, learning that she can make this money on her own um, mm -hmm. tells her that she doesn't need me as much, right? So that's, right. that's a pretty big shift for him. Yeah. Go from um, from that moment, the Katie. Katie. Mm -hmm. I know I don't make a ton of money, but we're getting by. Barely. We're barely getting by. That comment could make an insecure guy insecure. We can do better than barely. I could pick up some extra hours. You don't have to do this. Yes, I do. We could use the money. Anyone can use money. But, but we need the money. And since my mom will stay with the babies during the day. She'll spoil them. They should be spoiled. They're babies. Well, Catherine, what, so Emily, that moment for Catherine, that fine, we need the money. What is that moment? Enough joking. <laughs> we really do need this money. Um, it's all of the insecurity moments before that. I know that, like, I know that talking about money is stressful for you and that it might make you feel small or something, but we've got to get over our pride here. We have babies to pay for. <laughs> so, fine. Um, yeah, there's something in that fine of, like, um, fine, you're kind of making me tell you the full truth, right? Like, yeah. you're not letting me off the hook with just the, like, we could use the money, but it's actually, it's more than, um, than it would be, like, it's not mad money, it's not vacation money, it's, we kind of, we need the money for yeah. bills and for babies and for all of those things, and, um, and he kind of, he, we could explore that moment being that he's kind of pushed you a little bit into that corner um, of having to tell him that truth, right? Right. Yeah. Hit that moment again that um, anyone could use. Mm -hmm. Anyone can use money. Okay. But... We need the money. And since my mom will stay with the babies during the day. She'll spoil them. They should be spoiled. They're babies. It's your first full-time job, you know. I know. Believe me. It's different working full-time. Making good money is... It doesn't come cheap. Work can cost you a little, you know? You sitting at the table all day, it's not all good times. They call it work for a reason. Not this job. Everyone I talk to says it's a piece of cake. All the girls in the block applied for it. I just got lucky. Okay, good. Let's go back to that. They should be spoiled their babies. Um, then Tom, what, what is that moment for you that it's your first full-time job you know? Um, I'm worried that she isn't prepared for the job that she's walking into, that she won't know how hard it might actually be. And I'm just trying to uh, shoot her straight, you know, and give her all the facts before I let her go into something that might hurt her eventually or yeah. us, you know. Yeah, I like that. I like that it's like sort of a mirror of what she's just done. She's kind of, um, okay, like I'm gonna have to tell you a little truth. Um, that we need this money and you're gonna you're gonna kind of counter with okay I'll tell you a little truth you may not be up for this you know um mm -hmm. and so even though we we know that the scene is so loving and they're they're obviously so well connected they still do have this little a little conflict and a little bit of um a little bit of tension here that we could explore right well go from um they should be spoiled their babies they should be spoiled they're babies it's your first full-time job you know I know. Believe me. It's different working full time. Making good money is, it doesn't come cheap. Work can cost you a little, you know? You sitting at a table all day. It's not all good times. They call it work for a reason. Not this job. Everyone I talk to says it's a piece of cake. All the girls on the block applied for it. I just got lucky. Besides, I'll just do it for a while till we get on our feet. Then I'll quit. Promise? Yeah. I don't want to become some, some career girl. 
But for now. You're sure you want to work? I'm sure I want to make eight cents a watch. Okay, good. What is that, what is that shift for you there, Catherine, in the middle of that line? Um, that we've, I've, I've sort of twisted and twisted and I've bargained with him a little bit. Yeah. And then that moment felt like a little bit of a pullback and like kind of embracing him and like, don't feel insecure. I'm just doing what we need to do for now. Um, and like comforting him in this moment. Um, this is just what we need to get by for now. And then I have every intention of quitting. You know. Yeah. So kind of building him back up, still kind of giving him that um, that uh, ego stroke a little bit of it's um, it's just a temporary thing, and I know that you've got this. Um, I'm just helping out for a minute, and then I'm gonna, <laughs> and then I'll let you be the man again. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to be some career girl. That's such an interesting. Line. <laughs> right. um, and then you, you, Tom. Tom, what are you doing in this beat? Um, sorry, in the, the um, beat in the yeah. middle of her line, or? Yeah, just kind of like, you're, you're giving it the promise, you're sure you want to work, what do you think is, is yeah. going on with him? Um, I am kind of relieved that she is, uh, kind of pulling on my side and saying that she knows it's just for, for now, and that once we're all back to normal, um, we'll go back to normal and Tom can be the provider again um, and kind of feel like he's helping um, instead of being uh, less than enough in his mind, I guess. Yeah. Um, so he, he's kind of trying to find something to, to get him back to normal. And that promise of her, um, quitting eventually, I guess, is his, uh, is what he wants in that moment. Yeah, so he kind of got what he needed in that moment, even though he didn't get, um, maybe if, if we were going to identify sort of the, the big um, super objective for Tom, it might be that he wants her just to not, not go to this job mm. and, and for the situation to be different, the circumstances to be different and for him to be able to, to handle it all on his own. Um, but he kind of got a mini objective in this moment of um, just knowing that this is only a temporary thing and that we're going to be able to go back to um, sort of his more ideal scenario or his, his better, um, her, his, his better world uh, <laughs> after a short period of time, right? Uh, right? So then he shifts us back after, you're sure you want to work? I'm sure I want to make eight cents a watch to his final line. Well, then I say knock him dead, gorgeous. Yeah, so he kind of goes back, um, he kind of takes a little uh, circle back to his early kind of playful energy that he started the scene with. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, I'm going to stop the screen share there. Cool. Um, so if we had a lot of time, um, if we were going to spend more time on this scene, um, we would, we would uh, go back through a couple more times and just try to see if there are more moments that we could carve out, um, any more shifts that we think are interesting, um, because there could be like so many tiny little shifts of energy in every, in, in every one of those like little mini beats. Um, that we can discover and um, and that's kind of what we would continue to work on if we were going to spend a lot more time on this particular um, this particular scene but for now can we just um, can we go through it one more time and I will get rid of my video so it's just the two of you and um, if you can uh, can you give me a lot of camera energy so that we can see kind of you guys talking to, to talking to one another okay yeah Well, aren't you the prettiest thing? What time is it? Early. I think I'm going to be late. You're fine. The time? Guess. Tom? Guess wrong? I kiss you. Guess right? You kiss me. It's morning. It sure is. Guess. 7.15? Mm. You smell good. 7.30? You smell better. Am I getting close? You were right the first time. Be honest. Tell me. How do I look? You could stop a clock. 
which could be a problem at this new place. Do I look like a girl worth eight cents a watch? Because that's what these girls get paid. Some of them make over $8 a day. A day? A day. Katie. Hmm. I know I don't make a ton of money, but we're getting by. Barely. We're barely getting by. That comment could make an insecure guy insecure. We can do better than barely. I could pick up some extra hours. You don't have to do this. Yes, I do. We could use the money. Anyone could use money, I but- I need the money. And since my mom will be staying with the babies during the day- <laughs> She'll spoil them. They should be spoiled. They're babies. It's your first full-time job, you know? I know. Believe me. It's different working full-time. Making good money is, it doesn't come cheap. Work can cost you a little, you know? You sitting at a table all day, it's not all good times. They call it work for a reason. Not this job. Everyone I talk to says it's a piece of cake. All the girls on the block applied for it. I just got lucky. Besides, I'll just do it for a while till we get on our feet. Then I'll quit. Promise? Yeah, I don't want to be some, some career girl, <laughs> you know, but for now. You're sure you want to work? I'm sure I want to make eight cents a watch. <laughs> well, then I say, now come dead, gorgeous. Awesome. Good talking, guys. <laughs> so I think that you can see that even though we're not able to do staging, we're not able to do blocking, um, we're not able to get into some of those other things that we would be doing when we're doing our scenes, we can still accomplish a lot with our actors um, just doing this table work and talking about these moments and thinking about um, what it is that they need from one another and what's happening in each of these moments. Um, so thank you guys so much for, for helping me demo this scene study. Um, you guys are are amazing and did a lovely job and um, I hope that you guys learned a little bit about some stuff that you might be able to do with your students um, during this time so that they're not feeling like they're just um, waiting around for their chance to, to explore acting again. So thanks so much and we'll see you next time. Bye!